everyone. I'm starting to filter in from the waiting room. We have another exciting main SVDC webinar today. This is actually part two of three with our Selling on Social Media series uh, with the lovely Nicole Lett from Breaking Even Communications. If you missed week one, don't worry about it. Uh, every week is going to build on each other, but also be new information that can stand alone as well. Um, and after each session, you'll receive a follow-up email from me with a link to the recording and the slides. So um, today's, well, it'll probably be tomorrow, but the next follow-up email will include links to the first session's information as well, so that you'll always be able to access everything. Uh, sounds like today we're going to be focused on the Facebook business manager and how to utilize that and also video and how that is going to play into all of these platforms. Uh, please use the chat feature to introduce yourself. Let us know where you're from, maybe what business you have or what industry you're in. If you have a link to your uh, business, go ahead and pop that in the chat. Um, what else? I think that that pretty much covers the information that I wanted to share. Like I said, if you, uh, if you weren't here last week, don't worry about it. We're gonna just keep going. Feel free to ask any questions uh, along the way. You can plug those questions into the chat. We usually answer those um, as they kind of come in, but there's always time at the end for some more. And then it looks like Nicole has also put in a link to the slides in the chat. So if you're somebody who likes to follow along with presentations, you can open that up now. Um, and there will be a link to that in my follow-up email as well. Otherwise, I think I'll pass it over to Nicole. All right. Thanks, everyone. So, um, all right. <laughs> I know sometimes you log in and you're using other people's Zoom accounts. I totally feel that. Um, I sometimes accidentally log in as my clients and it's kind of random. But um, I just um, kind of want to get an idea of, of who's in the room. What I'm curious about is people who are here today, if you have a website. So there's these little reaction tools that you've probably seen on the bottom of your screen. Maybe Kelsey can demonstrate. So thumbs up if you have a website and clapping if you don't. So clapping like Kelsey is if you don't, thumbs up if you have a website. Okay, or clapping. All right, no problem. All right, so some of this stuff is gonna have to do if you, so throughout this presentation, I make reference to if you have a website or if you don't have a website, because obviously the idea with social media selling is that you can use social media to sell things. You don't necessarily need a website. So today I want to cover Facebook Business Suite, which formerly was called Facebook Business Manager. I think I finally changed my brain to call it the right thing, but it's the same idea. It's something that you may or may not be familiar with, but like I said, what I'm going to do is go through it. I'm not going to spend any time on the ads part of this, but ads do come into play if you, if you do end up wanting to do that in the future. But we're just going to talk about setting up yourself for selling uh, on Facebook and Instagram, because basically you can have a Facebook store that's standalone um, without having a website. And Facebook has really, I mean, they have like a, you know, there's like a return section, there's a refund section, like you can run it like an e-commerce, you can even export some of the data as a CSV file for your bookkeeping. So you can essentially run an online store just with Facebook and Instagram if you like. Um, so we're going to concentrate mostly on that. I also wanted to spend some time talking about video because uh, unless you're a giant nerd like me, uh, Instagram announced last week that it doesn't consider itself a photo sharing platform anymore. It considers itself a video platform. So as business owners who do not want to own a movie studio, what are you supposed to do with that information? We'll talk about that today because there's definitely ways to do it in an efficient way without you feeling like you have to record everything all the time. So um, like I said, so these slides, if you'll, I'm going to be putting them on my screen as I go through stuff. So you don't have, I mean, if you want to watch it in another screen, that's totally fine too. But um but yeah, so anyway, that'll be through here. So week one, you know, we talked about setting some stuff up generally in terms of content marketing. That's what they called what we did last week was content marketing, marketing using content. I love it when things are called what they actually are. Um, so like I said, we're going to talk about setting up the Facebook business suite. So it's going to be like almost like two different webinars here as we're going through. 
And I'm gonna to try to give us time also to work on things for yourself. So if you haven't come to one of these before, I do like to give a little time. I call it now it's your turn, where I basically put you in your own breakout room to work on something. And then you can call me in if you have a very specific question about your individual setup or whatever. It kind of gives us some a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time without um necessarily everybody, you know, having to listen to a very specific problem you have that I can solve with you in a couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, so basically Facebook Business Manager, if you go to business.facebook.com, you're going to see something that looks a little bit different. And what I tell people is you as the business owner should own your business manager account. Don't let a marketing company set this up for you. You set it up yourself. And what you can do is you can grant access in your business settings to say if you have a marketing person you're working with or, or whatever. And let me just show you what that looks like. So you're not, I know this, this is all theoretical. You're seeing this for the first time and you're like, what is she talking about? So if I open up and I have a tab open and I go to business.facebook, it would help if I spelled business right, business.facebook.com. It takes us to what's called Facebook Business Manager or Facebook Business Suite. I don't know what it's actually called anymore, but something like that. And what you'll see is you know you're in a different part of Facebook because the top bar is going to be more of a gray color than that sort of Facebook blue color. I think you know what I'm talking about if you've been on Facebook before. Um, and there's also some other options. Now, as somebody who does this for a living, I have access to multiple people's accounts. They've given me access, and we'll see that in a second. But you might get here and not really see much of anything. Um, but like, so for example, like I have clients here in the sidebar who have given me access to their accounts and I have different levels of access based on what they've given me access to. So in this case, I have access to ads and events, um, but other, if I pick a different client, I might have other access as well. I'll let me go to my main account. Obviously you're not going to have multiple accounts, at least probably not, uh, <laughs> unless you've, you've done that on purpose. Um, and what it's going to take you to is it should look something like this on your screen. Now, like I said, I have a lot of stuff back here. You might have less stuff, but you'll see something that looks sort of like this. Um, so it's like Facebook, but it's a little bit different. Now, if you ever are someplace back here and you don't know where you are, look for the little hamburger menu. I like that it's called a hamburger menu because it looks like a little hamburger. Um, so if you click, if you don't know where you are, just find whatever this little liney thing is and click on it and you'll be able to, to like get to where you need to go. Um, so for example, in, if, like I said, let, so you set up business manager under your Facebook account. I know that, you know how, when you set up your business page, you had to have a Facebook business, you had to have a personal profile to set up the business page. It's the same thing here. But what you can do is like, let's say that I have a new employee and I want to give her access to some of my assets. I can just click on this business settings and each individual thing under Facebook uh, business suite lets me grant access to individual items. So let's say that I wanted to give her access to an Instagram account. So if I scroll all the way down, this is everything. If I look on the left sidebar, this is everything that is under or could be under this account. So if I hit on my Instagram accounts, I can see I have two Instagram accounts. So this one's the Breaking Even one and Jane Holland and both. I have, I have a secret Facebook account. Don't tell anyone. That's why there's two Nicole Willettes. I have a secret Facebook account. If you find it, enjoy. I will not friend you on it. Um, I don't go there. It's 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 just for testing stuff and whatever. Um, so if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to add someone else to be able to manage this account, I would be able to add another person here, no problem. Whereas if I go under this business manager account, oh, this is one of my old employees. He probably doesn't want to manage my account anymore. I can just remove, ta-da. It might take a second for him to actually like go away from the dashboard, but this is how you grant access to people to individual parts of things that you're going to set up. But as the business owner, it's important that you do this step and I'll show you why in the next slide. Um, please appreciate, by the way, like I worked with this company and somebody had claimed ownership of the Facebook page, but nobody could figure out who it was. And it took us three months. And one of their marketing people was on maternity leave. And it took us a while to figure it out. So this is why I say like as the business owner, to me, like the IT person or the, the company president. So when I go on my Facebook page, you see that the page owner is Breaking Even Inc. And also my fake Nicole account. And then other people have administrative or moderating roles, right? But you as the business owner should own your page because it is difficult to impossible to transfer ownership. 
I, I'm sure that if you sold your business or something and had to transfer ownership, like that would be fine. But, um, but like I said, you know, I know it's tempting to just let someone take care of it, but if, if they're the kind of company that says, okay, we're, I'm going to help you do this. And then you're going to give me access. Those are the kind of people you want to be working with because you want to retain ownership of that. Um, because the things we're going to set up are all going to be owned by this account. So what you're going to do, like I said, you're going to go to business.facebook.com. You're going to like set up and it's going to say, oh, do you want to add any pages to this account? You're going to add your business pages. Um, it will take you through exactly how to do this. And the reason they make it so easy is because Facebook uses this as its advertising platform. So they want to make it as easy for you to take everything and move it in here and to be able to take out ads as possible. So if you think they're being nice, they are being nice, but they plan on trying to make money off of you with it. And we're going to go through kind of, to me, what I see as sort of the, well, free is always in quotes. If something's free, you're the product, right? Or I think that's what the, how the saying goes. But um, the point being is it's important for you to take the step as the business owner so that you own your, your assets. Um, I'm going to skip this part, <laughs> but I'm leaving this in if you want to review this later. If you want to take out Facebook ads, to me, it's really important. I don't know why that writing's so big. I thought I resized it, but I'll resize it before you download it. Um, basically, if you're taking out Facebook ads and sending people to your website, this is just basically like a, oh, hey, you're paying to send traffic to your website. Maybe do these things first kind of slide. So. Um, and also within, and again, I'm not going to talk about how to set these tools up, but this is all part of Facebook business suite or whatever the heck it's called now. Um, there's something that you can install on your website called a remarketing pixel. So a remarketing pixel is a little snippet of code and it goes on your website. And what it does is let's say I go and I visit your website. So let's say I go, I visit Kelsey's website and I click away. What Kelsey can do afterward is she can take out an ad to me because I visited her website. So as you see here, I just took a screenshot of one of my remarketing pixels. And as you see, it's recorded 518 events. Now, is that people? So if somebody went and clicked on a couple of things, is that two events? I'm not entirely sure, nor is that number clickable. It's not gonna tell me who it is. That would be really nice of Facebook, right? If it actually told you who like looked at your store. No, no, no. What they want you to do is they want you to take out an ad to these people. Now, as you'd imagine, taking out an ad to people who've already been to your website, so these people are already considering making a purchase to begin with. So it typically is a little bit less expensive and it typically converts a little bit better because these people have some familiarity with you. The other thing you'll see though is page views is the default thing that's tracked, but I can also track other what are called events underneath this pixel. So I'm sorry that it's in like tiny writing, but that's how the screenshot is. So the it's events were page views, purchases, and subscribe. So I am tracking who comes to the website, who makes a purchase, and who fills out my subscription form. So let's say I wanted to take out an ad to people who came to the website minus the people who made a purchase and say, come back, here's 10% off. So if you've ever gotten an ad like that, have you, raise your hand if you've gotten an ad kind of like that, that was a little creepy, you were looking at something and then you got, that's how they're doing it. it they're not They're not magical, they're just using this. and. All businesses, yourself included, have access to this under Facebook Business Suite. Um, so it's called a remarketing pixel. And it'll tell you exactly how to set it up if you do want to go through the process, set it up, and add it to your website. What you do need to have if you're doing that, though, is you need to have what's called a privacy policy on your website saying that you're tracking people. Um, if you want to copy one of my privacy policies and obviously edit it, because otherwise that would be weird, it would, <laughs> it would be talking about my business and everything, you can go through and... Um, but the privacy policy basically says like what data you're collecting on the person, how you know how you're collecting it and how you're using it. Um, that's essentially what it says. Um, and you'll notice that you know most websites that you go to do have a privacy policy page for this exact reason. So anyway, I did wanted to mention this is part of what Facebook Business Suite includes all of this stuff that you can set up um, if you want. So. What we're going to do today is we're going to concentrate on setting up the product catalog slash commerce manager, because that's what sells stuff. Uh, this other stuff is just kind of easier ways for you to take out ads and things like that, which is great. This, what we're going to set up today is like the actual sales part. So um, there are two things that we could potentially set up. One is called a Facebook product catalog. So a product catalog is basically a catalog of your products. Again, I love it when they call things what they are. Um, 
but the Facebook product catalog displays the products. It doesn't really give you a way to buy them. But let's say that you're the kind of person who, I don't know, I'm selling, I'm, I'm trying to think of something that, that I wouldn't, um, I would just want to list that it's for sale versus have people like do the whole transaction on Facebook. Maybe you want to be able to tag products on Instagram. Maybe you want to be able to take out these dynamic uh, ads. So for example, let's say I looked at a particular pair of underwear on this underwear website. I could do a dynamic ad if I was the underwear company showing me this pair of underwear and other, other underwear like it. So you can personalize ads to people. Um, and you can also put basically your product catalog on your Facebook page. And let me just show you what that looks like. So I went ahead, um, by the way, this is, I'm going to just say this is a violation of Facebook user guidelines. I know this now, but I didn't know when I did it, but I, I keep it here so I can use it as an example. So I have a website that sells gift certificates. Gift certificates are a cash equivalent. So you cannot use Facebook product catalog or whatever on cash equivalents. I didn't know that. I, I wouldn't have done it if I, but I do just, just kind of wanted to show you. So this is what like my product catalog looks like. So when I click on my, so if I'm on the uh, gift MDI Facebook page, oh my God, sorry. I do not know why I did that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I get a lot of notifications on Facebook. When I go to the shop on Facebook and see all the products and I don't know why it's just not showing me the products it normally does. Um, this is, shows me all the products on my website. Um, so this is a product catalog. It's just, it's displaying products essentially. If you want to buy them, like, so like, let's say I wanted to buy this product. I have to go to view on the website and that's, that's what happens now with Facebook commerce manager, which is our other option. So this is called a product catalog. So it is showing us our products, right? Commerce manager lets you have a whole store within Facebook. So rather than sending someone to a website to make a purchase, they are, um, you know, doing it kind of through Facebook. So it gives you a little bit more features. Um, and obviously that's what Facebook wants you to do, right? It wants you to stay on Facebook and it wants to basically, Facebook wants to kind of become a little bit your payment processor. But if you're the kind of person who's like, I just want to display my products. I don't want to like do any commerce on Facebook. You can set up this product catalog um, within Facebook business manager. Now, if you're, maybe your company doesn't have like a lot of products, you can individually add them. So I had a client, for example, who was, had like five or six things in her Etsy store. So rather than like setting up a data feed from Etsy, she didn't have a lot of products. So she just individually added them. So if you have a few products and you can totally do that today as add them individually, if you have a lot of products and they change a lot, that's when I recommend connecting it to whatever website you have your product set up on. Now, obviously, if you don't have um, the products, you can, like I said, add them individually to Facebook in the Commerce Manager, and I'll get to that in a second. The other thing I want to just say that is helpful to do is you can connect your Facebook page to your Instagram account through here. You might have already done this um, a different way. But if you, let's say you post it to Instagram and I wanted to also post to Facebook, it's sometimes nice to connect those two things also in business manager. Um, and like I said, you click on the hamburger menu and click on business settings and you see the list of every possible thing you can connect. Um, again, I'm happy during the, now it's your turn period to go and kind of help you do this. If you feel like you need a little bit of handholding. So, um, it, you know, it's like, I tell people like, I, Setting something up is something you have to do once. As long as you're able to maintain and use it, to me, that's like the important part. So don't worry about remembering exactly how to set something up because that's like the least important part of it. And honestly, someone like me can definitely help you with that. Um, or, you know, you can watch lovely tutorials on YouTube and stuff about exactly how to do the setup part. Um, so option one, Facebook product catalog. List of your products, you can tag them on Instagram. Facebook Commerce Manager, you can set up a whole store. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sort of demo that so that you just see what kinds of questions it's going to ask you. Now, in general, because you're setting up, you might be setting up payment processing and stuff. It might ask you as you're going through. And again, you don't have to do this like obviously right now, but if you're thinking about doing this, it's going to ask you questions like your bank account number, because it has to like transfer the money to your bank account. It's going to ask you your EIN number. It's going to ask you the typical things that the last time you set up your POS or anything or a bank account or something, it's going to ask you those kind of questions as you're going through. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like set up a store. Like I don't have one or that I have one that's not completely illegal. Um, okay. Let's go to here. 
I'm gonna go back to my main, the main part of the account here. Come on. Oh, I can just click on the hamburger menu, right? I told you guys, click on the hamburger menu. And then one of these things is commerce manager. See how they made it really big and they did an icon? Huh, I wonder why they did that. They want us to use it because they're sneaky like that. Now, up until I think it was July 1st, but let me see if they've extended it. They were like, oh, we're gonna have fee free payment processing until July 1st. And what they wanted you to do was be like, get used to using this and then kind of forget. It's kind of like when you do the free trial and then suddenly you're billed $7.99 a month and you're like, oh, they got me. Um, so as you see here, I don't have any shops. So I'm just gonna click add shop. You're gonna do this too when you're in Commerce Manager. You're gonna have no shops too. Don't worry, I'm, I'm right with you. And so as this is, is coming up, you have a decision to make. Um, so it says Facebook, Instagram, or both. Um, I don't know, I kind of want both. So I'm just gonna click next. So it says connect with Facebook or Instagram. Connect to another website. So, or check out with messaging. Okay, let me go through. This is basically the biggest decision that you're gonna make. So obviously, as you see, they recommend using their process. And look, oh, look at what it did. Selling fees waived through June 30 of 2022. So it's funny because they moved the goalpost there because it was supposed to be at the end of last month. <laughs> so the fees are going to be, last I checked, they were 5% processing. So if you've done any credit card processing, you're like, it's not that expensive, right? It's usually like, if you're in person, it might be like 2% or something like that. And if it's online, it might be 2.9%. And it's because obviously the credit card company takes a certain percentage and Facebook wants its percentage too. So what you want to think about if you're selling through Facebook is if you're, if you're checking out and doing everything through Facebook, they're going to charge 5% for the pleasure but only apparently starting in 2022. So if you wanna try this for a year and see how it goes with, without their selling fees, they're still gonna charge the credit card processing fees, I'm sure. Um, but so that's what this option is. That's why it's gray and recommended and everything is they want you to use their service. Now, obviously if you don't have a website, this is a good option, right? Because and it's so funny because I'll meet people and they'll be like, oh, I don't know about 5%. And I'm like, okay, would you rather take 5% or would you rather not get the sale at all? Just mark it up 5%. It's cool. Like, um, so that's option one. Option two is check out to an, from another website. So you saw my example, how it like showed the thing and it said, go to the website. So when I, I and then it opened up in a new tab that I could have like bought the thing. So it actually opened up in this tab, which I didn't let load. So there we go. So, and then I can go pay for it on this website. Um, so that's option two is to send people to your website to do the transaction. And obviously Facebook is going to make it so that if you stay on Facebook, look what it says, more opportunities to make sales, exclusive access. You know, they're, they're really trying, they're really, they're really laying it on thick here, but at the same time, if they're not charging us selling fees, why not try it? Um, check out on another website. So if you have an e-commerce site, you can send, you know, you can use these tools, but send people to the website to actually make the purchase. Or you can check out with messaging. So I don't know if anybody, has anybody ever sent anyone money through Messenger? Anyone besides me? Okay. I guess I, I don't do it a ton, but like, it's definitely possible. So you can actually do transactions through Messenger. So that's what this third option is. I feel like most people aren't used to that. And based on your reaction, as I said that, I'm guessing that that is still true. So I would pick one of the first two options, whether you want to use Facebook to do um, Facebook and Instagram to do the transaction or whether you want them to finish the transaction on your website. Um, but like I said, uh, what I would do if you do this, just put in your calendar that the fees are, <laughs> are starting next year so that it'll remind you to either go turn it off or to, to make a decision on it one way or the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do their recommended because they're not, and I'm going to put in my calendar to check a month ahead of time to see if they have are continuing to weigh the fees. So then it says, okay, what account do I want to sell from? So I want to sell from my, you know, because like I said, I have access to multiple. So this page, so there's my Facebook page and there's my Instagram account that's connected to it. So, you know, that step ahead of time where I was like, it's nice to connect your Facebook to Instagram. This way, my shop will work on my Facebook page. It'll work on my Instagram page. 
Now, if I didn't, if I wanted to, if I didn't have a page at all and was starting from scratch, I could do this from here as well. Like if so, if you're like, oh, I have an Instagram account, but I don't have a Facebook page yet, you can totally uh, do that here. Um, and then click next. It wants my business email address. Let me put that in. And as you see, you see on the left side, as I'm going through the stages, it's doing the green check mark thing. It's like, I'm going through the stages, it's checking me off. And it says, oh, what products do I want to sell? And so I want to make a new catalog with my products. So let's say I was, so I'm going to just call this, uh, I started a business with my niece over quarantine selling uh, slippers. So let's try that. And it's, hold on. It's, an, it's on Etsy. Let me see if I get this Etsy listing right. Oh, I already did it. Hold on. Oh, uh, I was hoping. Anyway, so I, I would go through and I would finish. And then it asks the next step. It's not going to, apparently I've done this as a demo too many times in workshops because it says I've already done it. Um, but it basically says like what products. So these are two different product imports that I've done, um, but I could just set up a new product catalog here. And again, like I said, you can individually add products to the product catalog. You don't have to have it import. There was just 180 products back here. So 186 at one point. So that seemed kind of annoying to manually enter and it was already on a website. So that's why I had it pull in, but you can individually add products to your catalog. So don't worry about it having to have a data feed or anything. Um, but the next question it's going to ask you is about shipping and returns. Um, so you have to like figure out, you know, obviously your, your shipping and your return policy. Like, so, you know, what period of time are you going to take returns? You know, what period of time are you going to take them? That kind of thing. And then how shipping will generally work. Obviously if you're selling like furniture, maybe like you, pick up only or something like maybe you don't want to deal with that but um another way to do it if you just kind of want a quick and dirty um mathematical formula there's um something called online there we go as you see i go to this website a lot online shipping calculator.com basically whatever products you're thinking of shipping put them in whatever packaging you're going to put them in you know if it's a box or if it's an envelope or whatever and then measure and weigh it when it's all packaged up. And what you can do is what I typically do is I pick, you know, whatever my town. And then I pick somewhere really, really far away, like Hawaii. <laughs> um, do I, don't I spell Honolulu? Oh, I don't want Hong Kong. There we go. Honolulu. I just pick something kind of far or a lot or Anchorage, Alaska, something like that. And so let's say in my envelope, I'm using but an uh, 11 by eight. I don't know. And let's say it's two inches thick. And let's say it weighs 16, uh, 14 ounces. I have no idea, by the way. What this will do, and if you, the other thing you can do if you're more like want to talk to a real person is you can go down to um, USPS. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort it by the column of retail rate, lowest to highest. So why is it? Okay. Why is it saying zero dollars on the top one? Okay, I've never seen that before. But I see parcel select is eight dollars and fifteen cents. So I know that, like, if I'm so if I I do a few of my products this way, and I see that maybe my products cost between you know eight and ten dollars to ship, and that that I know that I can build that either into my pricing or I can add a shipping rate to my um to my Facebook store. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So, but generally you want to account, I mean, you don't want to lose money every time you mail something out. So, you know, just think about kind of how you want to handle shipping. 99 times out of a hundred, the U S postal service is your best bet. They're typically, um, less expensive. They will pick, they will pick up orders. Um, and I think if you send it first class, you can have it. So like I, I saw, I heard a friend of somebody who like shipped out a product and then the woman canceled her order. And it had been shipped, but it hadn't arrived yet. And so she just had it come back to her. <laughs> so even though she lost money on shipping, the woman didn't get a get free product. I don't, I have, that's the only time I've heard of that happening, honestly. But, um, but it builds in a little bit of the, I think the first class builds in a little bit of, uh, of security there. And then it'll let you preview your store and you can make changes to the way it looks and stuff like that. And um, 
and yeah, you can totally see, you know, uh, you can make some changes to what it looks like and ta-da, it's published. And so it'll go on your Facebook page. You know, you'll be able to tag stuff on Instagram. And like I said, if someone sees a product that they like, they'll be able to click on it and go through the whole purchasing pro process uh, right on Facebook or Instagram. Um, so yeah, so that's Commerce Manager. It's, um, you know, and obviously like depending on what website software you use or how many products you have will depend on exactly how you go through that process. But it's um, it's going to ask you a series of leading questions anyway that, that you can answer. But, um, but it's, I think it's, worthwhile to, uh, to do. Now you might, I like that I included this slide. Think this is stupid and don't care. <laughs> Here are some other things you can do. So maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, I'm an accountant. I don't care about any of this. And that's totally fine. Valid. I'm also a service provider. So I get that. Um, what I want you to do is here's the thing with most people, they want to at least initiate the transaction online. It makes them feel better they're in the moment they can do it. So like this morning I woke up and I saw that someone had booked four days in my, my co-working space conference room while I was sleeping. That was lovely. And there was a couple of other days she wanted to book, but she felt good knowing that she could book those days when we had the, so when we had the conversation for me to sell her more, she was already like, oh my God, it was easy to set up and everything like that. So I wanted to offer a few kind of ways that people could initiate the transaction with you online. Um, one is to use a booking form. So like I said, I use a booking form for my um, conference room at my co-working space, but maybe you, you know, uh, you're a service provider, so you do kind of a time for money thing. So people can, you know, book online. And if you don't want to pay for the paid version of Calendly is 15 bucks a month. Um, the paid version allows me to take payments. So if someone books a one hour consult, they have to pay for it. Um, so it actually comes, comes through ahead of time. So if someone books one meeting with me, it's already paid for itself for, you know, for the month, no problem. And I get at least one a month. So it's totally worth me paying $15 for it. But if you don't want to pay anything, if you want to use the free version, you can let people book like a free consultation or something like that. Let people initiate the transaction online in some way. Um, another thing I want to throw out there is people love buying gift certificates, especially around the holidays. Um, so thinking of a way that you can sell gift certificates on your website, um, if, you, if you want to do that. Um, you can use your website software or you can use another software. Um, I've used jotform.com before to set up payment forms for people. It's $19 a month. Again, very similar price point to Calendly and people can buy gift certificates. And I've seen people, um, I set this up for a client, um, uh, like a taco restaurant in a very small town, um, over Christmas. And she did 10, 10 sales before Christmas, uh, averaging 25 bucks. So, um, it was totally worth her spending $19 in December to uh, get that set up. Um, and you could sell it other times of the year too. Um, and then, you know, finally, if you want a, a, a standalone uh, e-commerce site. So, and by standalone, I mean not on Facebook. Like you want it to have a URL that you can send people to, even if they're not on Facebook or Instagram. There are, there is such thing as free e-commerce. So MailChimp just launched one or free mail, a MailChimp store. They take 5%. So there is a, the processing fees, and then there's the MailChimp selling fees. Um, bigcartel.com lets you sell up to five products um, total um, for free. Uh, you know, they have limited templates, but you can sell five products um, on there. Um, Square, squareup.com lets you have a free e-commerce type store. They all look very similar. I can, I'll see if I can find two examples of them uh, after, while we're uh, in breakouts and you'll see what I mean, but if you use Square, like, you know, you do the farmer's market or the um, the art show type scene and you have, if you do the Square, you can literally just have a website and it's like yourwebsite.square.com. So typically if you're using the free e-commerce site, they're getting free advertising in your domain. And sometimes they're taking a larger percentage than they would, than you would normally take if you had like an actual e-commerce site. Um, but obviously they have to pay their staff and support teams and co, you know, and hosting and all that. So I don't begrudge anyone who needs to make money. That's for sure, because they've definitely made these tools a lot easier to use in the last few years. So, um, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to put that out there as a possibility. I do have a couple of videos about how to set up the free e-commerce stores. Um, I've done them for like on my YouTube channel. So, um, I'm sure other people have as well, but, uh, yeah. So what I want to do now it's your turn. So what I want to do for this little break, uh, and I say break very generously, is I want you to pick one of these two options and 
you can also pick none. That's fine. Like, I'm not here to make you do anything. Uh, <laughs> you're here voluntarily. Um, but the first one is, you know, set up Facebook Commerce Manager, you know, go to business.facebook.com, click on the little hamburger, go to Commerce Manager, and just go through the steps to set it up. Um, and connect your Instagram account to your Facebook page if you haven't already so that you can sell both places. And option two is think about setting something up for people to buy online on a regular basis. I know that like if you're the kind of person, if you're selling antiques or something, you might have a one of a kind item and that's great. But I'm thinking something that like multiple people could buy without you having to do any extra work. So, you know, um, maybe you have merch, you know, t-shirts and stuff. Maybe you have gift certificates. Um, yeah, just, just in general, I want you to like figure out some way that people can buy from you online if you haven't already. Like I said, we have some tools at our disposal here. Um, even if you want, if you're like, you know, I just have never used Facebook Marketplace before and I see that people use that a lot and I want to add a product to there, that's a totally fine use of time as well. Uh, but just, you know, let's put something out there uh, during, during this session if we can. And if you want to wait to finalize it, you just know that all of these things have multiple steps and the last step is publish. So I, I, this can be in draft form for as long as that you want or need it to be. Don't, I'm not trying to strong arm you into like making this live right this second. I just want you to feel like if you need technical help setting this up, that we're here to do that. So does anybody have any, is there any questions we should answer Kelsey before uh, we do that? Oh, hold on. You're muted. I tried. The only really problem. specific uh, question was about listing services rather than products, but you kind of mm -hmm. hit on that at the end. Yeah. Um, uh, and I don't know. It says, uh, sorry. yeah, so it's for services. So maybe, okay, nutrition. I'm assuming you're a nutritional consultant. I think if I remember this correctly. So, um, so yeah, you might want to make a booking type form. And so for me, because I'm a service provider, I have I have a, um, a free consult that's 30 minutes. And then I have like, I have, I call it my client onboarding session. That's an hour long and I make people prepay for that. Um, so you can definitely set up multiple and the, the Calendly, the, even the free service, as long as you're not taking payment, you can set up multiple calendars. Like I have one calendar that's just for my intern and I'm only available like two, I make myself available two mornings a week for my intern. Everyone else gets a little bit more availability because I have but you can make specific calendars for specific groups of people and you can make the events last however long you want. Um, I make our conference room so it can't be booked more than 48 hours. It has to be booked 48 hours or more ahead of time so that I don't get a booking at, you know, 8 a.m. for noon and I don't have anyone there to open. So, um, yeah, I would make some kind of booking thing because a lot of people just don't want to go back and forth with a professional. Um, I have a new, like a nutrition person that I work with and she's really hesitant about the booking, but I feel like I have to text her every time I want to meet with her over and over and it makes me like do it less. So, um, yeah, it's just, just think about a way to make it easy for people to buy from you using one of these services or none of these services, or like I said, I'm, I'm not here to make anyone do anything. Um, but it's all about what your comfort level is. Just consider me as being here for setting things up. Um, if you need help. So what you can do is when you're in so you're going to be alone in a breakout room. That's on purpose. That wasn't me being silly. Um, and what you can do is you can, there's a little help button. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in order. So if someone asks for help, I'll go to them. Then I'll go to the next person. If I don't get to you this particular session, I will get to you our next breakout. And if I don't get to you the next breakout, I'll stay after and answer any questions that you have. So just know that if you came here with a question to get answered, I, you will get it answered today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in the breakout rooms for about 20 minutes. Um, and then I'm going to have you guys come back. So like I said, just ask for help if you need to, but for now, either set up Facebook uh, commerce manager in Facebook business suite, or, um, set up one of the other options that I have listed there. Um, so I'm going to open the rooms now and I will see you in about 20 minutes. All right. So as everyone comes back, I'm wondering, um, do we have anybody who'd like to like sort of share something that they, they learned as they were setting their thing up or something that they're proud that they did during the breakout session, anything like that? I don't want to make anyone share. Hmm. 
Nobody? Not even a little bit? You can be proud of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll share. Awesome, thanks, yeah. Um, I went in and I actually set up a catalog um, with five items for sale. Um, although they're not items, they're services. It's the nutrition coaching, but nice. then I went into the shop and I can't actually set up a shop. So I have to work through some things. It said it wasn't compliant with the Facebook rules and regulations. So I'm not Okay. Ready. There might be a, hmm. I'm happy to look at that after with you if you want. Sure. Yeah. I bet it's something little. Yeah. It usually is. Okay. Oh, Facebook. Always oh, <laughs> something. Anyone else? Okay. Don't mind me. I was telling Kelsey something during the break and it made me want to add a slide here. So I just did that. All right. So thanks for uh, being game for that. And like I said, if you have any specific kind of thing that comes up for you, it seems like, oh, it's not exactly what my screen looked like. That's welcome to my reality. Facebook is always doing different stuff. I'm happy to take a look at it with you after the, uh, after the session here today. So, um, so just know that, you know, your question won't go unanswered. So yeah, so anyway, I think I mentioned at the beginning that this is going to feel like two separate hours, and it definitely is, but it's okay, I think anyway. I was just trying to think of introducing all the ways that I sell on social media into um, a three-session uh, course with the SVDC here, and I really wanted to definitely address video marketing, and I needed a specific chunk to do that in, so that's why I stuck it in this particular week, but, um, you know, so... This is my little crash course in being a television studio, but actually it's not really, I promise. No, no, no television studio required, no, no camera required other than your phone. Um, it, I promise this will be a relatively painless, I promise. Um, but I wanted to share with you a few stats that make video compelling. Like I said, Instagram announced last week that it doesn't consider itself a photo sharing platform anywhere. It considers itself a video platform. So that's fun. Um, but, you know, the other thing is that, you know, people really retain messages that they hear on video and, you know, video ads were a ways that people discovered a brand they later purchased from. Um, marketers, 84% of marketers say video helps generate them generate leads. So even if you're a service-based businesses, videos can work well. Um, the increased sales, people who watch videos are 1.81 times more likely to purchase than non-video viewers. Um, 15% of all Facebook content in 2020 was video. I'm guessing it's higher in 2021. We all have seen the separate tab for video in Facebook. Um, that's not going away. Um, YouTube is the number one dr purchaser driver on social media currently. I have a feeling that TikTok is going after them pretty hard, um, but that's just my read on things. And um, Instagram videos already, even before this announcement, had more engagements than videos did. So um, all this to say, you know, 66% uh, of marketers on TikTok have reported seeing success. I would be among that 66%. I think TikTok's a real sleeper cell. And um, a lot of videos, 5 billion videos watched daily. So, um, and we see increasingly that different social media sites are prioritizing video, including Facebook and Instagram that have their own separate tabs, that if you follow a page and there's a live video, you get a notification, that kind of thing. Um, so, what I want to do is prepare you as a small business owner to do a little bit of video how you want to do video. And I'm not saying everybody, like I said, has to be a performer or anything like that, but there's definitely ways of doing video even without you having to get on camera, um, if you can believe it. So, um, and I did want to throw out there, I've done a few tests on my own where I take out an ad to video content and, and, and then the same ad to just a blog post that I have. And video is always cheaper and always has more reach. So I spent $7 boosting, well not boosting, I spent $7 on promoting the video and I spent $7 promoting the blog post. And as you see, um, I got over 1500 impressions on the video and 18 on the blog post. So you just, you usually get more bang for your buck with video. And people like watching videos. Like I will watch a video on something that I would never read a page on about. 
And I don't know how many people, it's funny because when I, when I do a presentation like this, it's even early in the morning. Like if I'm doing it at like 8 a.m. at a breakfast thing, I'll say, how many of you watched an online video today? And honestly, three quarters of the room has their hand up. And I'm like, how many of you have made a video and uploaded it in the last three months? And like two people, <laughs> you know, maybe. So it's one of those supply and demand things where people like watching video, but a lot of people aren't willing to make them. So it's kind of an opportunity for you to sell things. Um, and I'm going to just break out kind of your options with video and talk about why I pick mine. Um, so there's two types of, of video content. You know, there's live video or streaming video. I think we also use the term. And then there's, you know, pre-recorded video. So like you, you know, you record it, edit it, and then you upload it whenever you're ready. Um, so streaming video, obviously it's streamed live. You can have participation. Like people can be leaving comments and stuff like that if they're watching it live. Um, you can have guests come in, that kind of thing. It's a little bit interactive. Um, you can usually stream to, you can stream to multiple platforms at the same time. And I'll show you what, how I set my thing up so that you know what I do. Um, but I stream to Facebook, um, Twitter, and YouTube at the same time. So it goes all those places. And when the stream is done, the video lives there. So I have a copy of the video on Facebook, a copy of it on, on YouTube, and a copy of it on Twitter. I manually upload to Instagram and, and LinkedIn at the moment, but that's a story I'll save for some other time. Um, honestly, there's a, I, I would say I spend more time prepping than actually doing anything because I'm, you know, getting all my links ready and I'm like getting things set up so that when I'm presenting, I have kind of all my resources ready to go. Um, but I don't, because it's streaming and when I click end, it's done and the broadcast lives wherever it lives, I don't have to edit anything afterward. And that really speaks to me as someone who had to edit video in their last job a lot, uh, especially video of yourself, um, which is, can be painful. But I now know what all my weird little ticks are. That's great. But pre-recorded video, right? You can script things. You can re-record. You can edit. Like, there's a lot more um, room for error, you know, because you can, there's nobody watching you as you're doing it. You can, you know, usually, you know, you can add a little bit of production value. So if you talk about something, you can splice in, you can say, oh, and when we mow lawns, we do it this special way. And you can splice a video of your lawn mowing service, you know, above you talking, that kind of thing. Um, it is more work, but there's more room for error, you know. Um, and since you're manually uploading the video when you're ready, you have a lot more control over what everything looks like. In my stream, it picks... You know, I think I can pick my thumbnail, actually, when I when I uh, schedule the stream. I can pick my thumbnail, but um, in some services, you can't. So um, I'm sure in some videos, my thumbnail is probably, like, uh, nice and fun uh, because it just picks a random image from the video. So um, I want to talk to you a little bit about my marketing push that I do every single week. So that I spend two hours on this. I, I've got it down to a science. I do a weekly live stream. I do it Tuesday mornings at 9.15 a.m. approximately. I basically have a meeting that's 7 a.m. to about 8 30. So I made it like starting like after that because I already have to like be in front of like there's multiple people at this meeting. I have to put on lipstick and everything. So I might as well record a video while I'm doing it. So I would say during the week ahead, I spent about an hour on the prep of it. And then I would say an hour in terms of like doing the broadcast and then kind of closing it out. So a total of two hours. And so my format is I address, I call it Ask Nicole. I do a marketing topic. I address some, a question or a topic. It's usually 10 to 20 minutes long of a broadcast. Um, so, you know, the prep that might be involved. So I want to do one, for example, about email deliverability, but I'm not an email deliverability expert. So I'm trying to get my friend Dave to come on, um, but he doesn't like being on video. So I'm trying to think of somebody else. Anyway, so I might try to get a guest. I might set up the title slides. I might get the links ready that I want to share. So Basically, I get my environment already so that when I'm, you know, talking and doing the stream, I'm not like hurriedly trying to get something on the other screen. And at the end of it, um, I have to manually upload to LinkedIn because they won't let me stream yet. I, I have applied for it six times and they keep saying no. Based on who they're letting stream, I don't know why, because I feel like my content's really good, but whatever, I'll keep applying. Um, and Instagram is kind of weird in how you have to set it up. And I finally am trying a third service uh, to try to do it directly to Instagram. But right now, since I'm already manually uploading it to LinkedIn, I just upload it to Instagram, you know, and I put the little video and the little description of it when I upload it. So I would say all that takes approximately two hours. And so what I do when I'm broadcasting, and I'll demonstrate the software in a second, is it streams automatically to Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Afterward, I download the recording and put it on Instagram and LinkedIn. 
Um, YouTube, I, I made it, I used Zapier to grab the video from my YouTube in the description and title for my YouTube channel and post a blog post on my website from it automatically. And then automatically MailChimp takes that blog post and sends it to my email subscribers. So all of this is automated, um, the parts that can be, and I'm trying to automate more of it so it can go even faster. But I have about 500 people between the streams watching it. And I've definitely gotten clients from people who have watched it like my style and then hire me to do something. So um, it's definitely a good way if you're a service provider um, for people to get to know you because, and you're basically having this interaction with multiple people at the same time. So I like streaming because I hate editing video. Um, and with that in mind, I use a service called StreamYard and I'm just gonna show you generally how it works so that you just kind of see how it's not super technical. So what I did is I went ahead and logged in ahead of time and I made this, un I don't know why I called it untitled, but I, I can edit it if I want, I guess, to say something. Now, what, it's, what I can do here is I can have it streaming to all these services and I just have to connect my Facebook pages. It will let me stream to LinkedIn once I'm approved, but it won't approve me. So if you guys want to bug LinkedIn for me, feel free. Um, so I can just click whatever services I wanted to stream to without having to set anything up, which I like. Um, but for now, I'm just going to click skip record only. And with that, and I'm just going to call this. So now I'm going to enter the studio. It gives me a tip because now right now my camera and my, let's see if it lets me do it when I have zoom on. We'll see. I might just keep myself unmuted. So we're not uh, echoing. Oh, come on. There we go. So there I am in the video. Um, and I can pick what camera, what microphone, that kind of thing. And I just enter the studio. So I keep moving the zoom. I know you guys can't see it, but the zoom little toolbar keeps being in the way. So as you see, I'm currently off screen. Now, what I did is I invited Kelsey on our break to, uh, if I, so if I wanted to invite someone to join the broadcast, I could send them this link and what they will do. And so right now I'm off the stream and now I'm on the stream. And now I'm off the stream. So I can take myself in and out. And I can also take individual participants in and out as well. Um, I also have this little toolbar here where I can set up all my, I can set up my banners. I can set up all. So there's my little like titles thing. Oh, at, at the end, I put this out if you want to, but you know, so I have all this stuff set up and I have stuff that I want to demo right here. So this is a little preview of what I'm showing tomorrow, which is you can, you can animate. Um, fake text messages um, as a video. So I was just demonstrating how I would do that. It's just a totally fake conversation. So I can preload videos here and all that. So essentially, um, so if Kelsey joins, like she will come down here and also be grayed out. And I don't know, I might have to have approved something ahead of time to actually make this happen. This was a little last minute decision. But point being is you see that when I'm ready to go live, right now it says record in the upper, oh look, there's Kelsey on the bottom. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to add both of us to the broadcast, um, I could add us both to the stream and I can put us side by side. But I think it just acts weird when, uh, when, Right now we're on Zoom, so it's like two video things and it's acting weird. So I think that's why it says device is not connected. But point being is it says record in that upper corner. And so when I hit record, when it's connected to social media platforms, it's going live. So here we are, we're recording and see, look, it shows that we're live. Now we're not connected to any social media platforms. So it's not going anywhere, but, um, and then when I'm done, I just click end broadcast and it's done. And then ask me how it went, which is a lovely, but, um, but what I can do is within this platform, it will save my recordings, I think for up to, so this is past broadcasts. So here's the test broadcast with the SBDC that lasted 13 seconds, not a particularly amazing. And if I wanted to, I could download the recording. Um, and that's how I do it for Instagram and for uh, LinkedIn, but all these are past recordings and uh, yeah. And it's really easy to kind of connect destinations back here too, if I wanted to add a destination. I can add all of these different things to the custom RTMP is how you add Instagram. And what's really funny is there's a connector called yellow duck and see how StreamYard is a duck. So yellow duck is a way to connect StreamYard to Instagram. Apparently I haven't figured out how to do it yet correctly. I keep thinking I have it figured out, but 
I guess what I'm trying to say is if you've ever streamed before and you had to set up an RTMP server and have it be really complicated, it doesn't have to be complicated anymore because the serv services like this exist. And um, you don't have to use StreamYard. There's other ones. There's like one stream and, and there's stream up or whatever. I just happen to like this one best. Um, so I'm just saying that if you ever tried this and it was too technical and you didn't want to do it, um, it's gotten less technical. So um, so know that streaming is totally an option. And what's nice about it is you don't have to edit. And if you're like me and hate editing and you feel like you're pretty good off the cuff, then it works out okay. <laughs> now, if you're like one of those people who's like, I want to practice first and I want to do recorded, that's totally fine. And um, actually, I think my next slide is I'm demoing a different software that I use. So let me actually check that that's, my God, there we go. Real yeah, quick, um, sure. If, if people are commenting while you are live, can you see them in that program? Yes, like, you no? can. Um, they have to have their um, profile be public. So if they comment, so sometimes on broadcast, people will be like, oh, I was commenting. But if they have like their their Facebook profile kind of locked down, they have to um, go to, I think, streamyard.com slash Facebook and enable Facebook to like accept their comments or something. So, but I definitely, I think in my last broadcast, which I'll share, I'll share the link of because it has some short form video in it. Um, one of my friends totally. Um, so yeah, if, if people's comments are public, you can, you can share them on the screen. Um, as part of that. So it's kind of fun. I did mention, I didn't mean to mention that. It does have like a fake comment back there. That's a duck. Um, let's see. Oh, I can't, I got to create a new one. It's gonna ask me every time. Um, but yeah, I found, I found this to be pretty, just going to enter the studio with nothing on. Um, so here is, here's what a sample comment looks like. This is like a, clearly a fake comment, but if I was live, like it would show all, all the comments appear in this little comment tab and I can pick whether I show them or not. And I can have up to 10 people in what's called the green room. So like, let's say that, and I did this as a, I did a sort of QVC style broadcast with local businesses and they each had a 15 minute segment. So some people would come, come on early and I would see them come on. And in the private chat, I could be like, hey. Um, yeah, it told me I was backstage. Which yeah, feel very important. So yeah, so you're great out there and you're waiting, but I can also chat with you uh, as a guest and, and nobody can see this chat. Like this is just us. Everything that's in this little window is what's being broadcast. I can share my screen. I can have multiple people on the screen. I'd say more than four people total on the screen can feel a little chaotic. Um, also just that's kind of hard to manage anyway, but um, but yeah, so you can basically do some pretty high level stuff back here, I find. Now, if you're more of the kind of person who wants to record things ahead of time and edit them, there's a lot of on, there's a lot of video editing software. I like online stuff because um, some of my computers are Macs, some of them are PCs. We're all in different places, and I want my if I start something and some someone on my staff needs to finish it, like we all we need something that's kind of central. So I've used this for a long time. It's WeVideo. Video. I think it's ninety nine bucks for the year. Um, Streamyard's a little expensive. Um, it can be anyway, um, but for what I get from it, I don't mind paying $50 a month to stream to up to eight platforms at the same time. I think the um, $30 a month one or the $25 a month one lets you stream to three platforms at a time. Um, so yeah, 25 bucks is probably good for most people here. Um, so if I want to edit video, I can just click what format that I want. I'm starting from scratch with a horizontal video in this template. Come on. And like I said, I'm doing video on video and um, my internet connection's a little, of course my ethernet cable's arriving tomorrow, but what can you do? But what's nice about this software, I find iMovie super hard to, I'm just gonna call it my project, I, whatever, it's fine. What I find hard if you've ever used iMovie is I find like the not being able to layer tracks is kind of annoying, or at least like I haven't used iMovie in a long time, but editing in iMovie used to drive me crazy. Um, but what I can do here is anything I've ever uploaded is back here. Um, and so I can like take this video. Oh my God. Oh. Oh, does someone have a question? Hope that's the same question that was in the chat before. Okay. So what I can do is I can take these multiple video things, I can drag them. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, 
So whatever video is on top is going to be what's shown. So you'll see that it's going to cut away pretty quick to like what's below. I can, let's say I wanted to just do a different audio recording. I can mute both of these. I can mute this whole track and I can mute this whole track. I find it pretty straightforward to edit in this particular format. I can take this and I can cut this. I can move these things around. So I find it's, you know, you can have multiple video tracks and multiple audio tracks. You can always add more. So it'll ask you, do you want to add a video track or an audio track? And I like to name things as I go so that if it's complicated, I can remember like, oh, this is the speaker and oh, this is the supplemental slides or whatever. Um, and then when you're done, you just click finish and it exports it as a, as a video file. So here's, so I, like I said, you know, I can name it whatever. And what you can do obviously is you can make a template. So if you're like doing a series of videos and they're all very similarly formatted, you can make a template and you can copy it and use it over and over again. So like, you know, if you have like a little intro music and a little whatever, um, and you just change what's in the middle, um, it becomes pretty straightforward. So as you see here, it's taking random screenshots from my video as usual, amazing expressions on my end. Um, and I can export it as video audio only or I guess as an animated GIF, I'm not really sure why anybody would want to watch that, but um, so I can say like full HD and then I click export. And what it's going to do is it's going to run, it's going to make a video file that I can download and put uh, places as, as well. So, and you probably saw there that there was the um, wide format video, which is the wide format, the whatever, the YouTube, the more rectangular shape of our screen typically format. There's a square format and then there's the kind of long, you know, phone format type when you make a video. So, um, so yeah, so don't let editing stop you. Like I said, um, I don't mean to talk badly about editing because I did, I edited myself on video for a couple of years before I started live streaming um, because, you know, now I'm pretty comfortable and, and all that. And if you're not, like, that's totally okay. There are these tools at our disposal. If you're mostly on your phone, um, and I'm gonna, I have a list here of different apps and things like that that you can use to edit video. Besides this, if you're more on your phone, then I just, like I said, I find WeVideo Video pretty, pretty straightforward to use. Um, and uh, yeah, and besides figuring out kind of, are you gonna record live or are you gonna like record ahead of time and, and edit it? Is there's kind of a couple of formats of video. I call them short form and long form video. Um, short form video is typically under 60 seconds. Um, and so, um, for example, Instagram reels are all 15 seconds long. And I don't know about you, but, um, it's kind of challenged me as a creative person to try to think of something that can fit in 15 seconds. That's like something somebody would want to watch. Um, but it's great for kind of small digestible pieces of information. Obviously you can have more ad possibilities if you have a shorter form video, um, if you're doing ads, um, longer form videos, are, you know, typically uh, anything above 60 seconds. So my videos must be, I don't know, lo the longest form ever, if it's, you know, 20 minutes in some cases. Um, but that's a format that speaks to me. I'm chatty, but, you know, I can fit more content in there. And if I wanted to, I could take samples of my long video and cut it up into little segments and post it too. Um, Nate, that might be in another iteration of my, uh, of my little process here of my two hours of marketing that I do a week on my video stuff. Um, I always like to include this Mark Twain quote about, it's like, it feels like a short form video would be less work, but in some ways it's more work because you have to be a little bit more thoughtful about it. Um, but I really like this, you know, if you want a five minute speech, give me two weeks to prepare. <laughs> two hour presentation, I'm ready today. <laughs> Pretty much. I feel that one. Um, and like I, you know, mentioned earlier with the, with the video, you know, there's a couple of different formats you can export your video in. And obviously it just depends where you're uploading it, um, which format's going to work best. And, uh, here's what they look like on, on different screens. So honestly, should I probably, uh, re-upload my video in Instagram in a square format? Would that work better? Yes. Am I a little bit too lazy to do that? Yes. So it's in, if you go follow it on Instagram, it's a 16 by nine. Uh, it, it's little, but it, it does the job, I would say. Um, but I probably would want to record something more specifically for Instagram if I ever got super into it. But basically all social media sites have video, right? And they all have this ability to either have live video or pre-recorded video. They all support hashtags for, for you to be able to like 
insert yourself into different kinds of content or people who might be looking for what you have to say. There's always some kind of base analytics. We can see how many people watch it, you know, how, what percentage of it they watch, uh, if they leave a comment, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of them have this ability to let you schedule the upload. So if it's one of those things where like you record a bunch of videos in one day and you just want to record and, and set them to schedule for the month, you can totally do that uh, on Facebook and otherwise. So um, yeah, I'm not going to go super into all these different things, but you might say to yourself, well, you know, I get maybe video for, and I, I'm just including these in case you are curious about what these different video things allow us to do. But um, the main thing I want to say is, I can see where you would watch this and think, okay, if you're a service business like Nicole, you're a marketing person, I get why you'd want to do video. But like, what if I'm selling a product, right? So this is kind of the opposite of what the Facebook commerce manager felt like, I think, right? Where you're like, well, like who, who would want to do that sort of thing? And I did want to show you an example. And this, this guy, I really admire him. Um, so he's somebody I follow on TikTok. He manufactures two parts for KitchenAid mixers to make them work better. One is something, you know, when you, I don't know if you have a KitchenAid mixer, but your KitchenAid mixer is mixing and the bowl starts like shaking like crazy. He basically manufactures something that you put on top of the bolt to make it not do that. Um, but like, as he's, so he sells this very specific product, right? And most people either don't know that it exists or don't know that they need it. And so video works great for him. So he has 178,000 followers, right? Um, and his videos are getting, you know, a lot of views and he goes over kind of like, oh, this is how you like make your KitchenAid mixer. Be so he here's him demonstrate, you know, his kid demonstrating the KitchenAid mixer. And he talks about like, you know, taking the KitchenAid mixer apart because it's not running well and, and whatever. So he gets, you know, a lot of, and so he uses, see, he's like people who are cooking hacks, KitchenAid, that kind of thing. So he basically creates a need for his product and his audience really likes him as a person because he's like, so this video has 194,000 views. Right? Um, so people, like I said, will, will I go and read about KitchenAid mixers in any universe? Will I read even a short blog post about KitchenAid mixers? No. Will I watch this guy talk about like, how you can make your KitchenAid mixer work better at 60 second intervals. Absolutely. I also follow like opera singers and, you know, there's a lot of, I just appreciate that in any industry, there's always drama, <laughs> even if I don't understand it. But, um, but point being is a lot of people, they want to run businesses like you run and they're living vicariously through you. And so what I wanted to include um, in this, if in case you're interested is just some tools, if you do want to explore video stuff, um, some of these are services that I call them like plug and play templates. So like these basically like have a template that's set up, you put your, your own stuff in and, and it makes it look really good, uh, without necessarily a lot of work. Um, Canva, if you use Canva has video editing capabilities within it. Um, and it comes with your, if you have a Canva pro membership, but a lot of these tools are relatively, um, you know, and a lot of them have free trials too. So if you're like, oh, I'm not sure, like you can try it out usually for a couple of weeks for free. And then, you know, like, let's say you have some great shots of your product, but you're like, oh, it would be really great. Like maybe this guy's making a professional commercial. It'd be really great if there was a picture of someone mixing by hand. And I don't know if I want to like get the lights in my kitchen and like get a bowl and like take a video of me mixing by hand. This is where clips come in. You don't, you can use clips that other people, you know, uh, royalty-free video clips. They have royalty-free images. They have royalty-free video clips too. So don't feel like you have to film everything yourself. Sometimes the perfect little clip to go between the two things you want to film already exists and someone else has filmed it. And these are all free, by the way. Um, and then I wanted to give a couple uh, streaming software tools. Um, you know, so... Like I said, some of them are OBS Studio is free. It's kind of a pain in the butt set up, but it is free. Um, you know, StreamYard is less of a pain in the butt. But like I said, I think you can stream to up to three um, platforms at the same time for $25 a month. But because I'm extra and I like to stream more places, I pay the 50. Um, if you'd use the $0 a month plan, they just put their advertisement. They just have StreamYard like all over your video, which is kind of annoying, but um and then, you know, in terms of video editing, there's tons of stuff. If you do like editing on your phone, I really like InShot a lot. It's a free 
it's a free app. Um, and to export it though, they make you watch a video ad before you export your video. That's the free version. Otherwise, it's $2.99. So I just bought it the other day. I just felt like a big spender and I just was like, $2.99, bought it. Um, but that that's it's really easy to edit on your phone with that app I find in particular. Um, but I just wanted to put a couple of other uh, options as well. But uh, yeah, people really like watching video and 90% uh, of videos I will say are watched with the sound off. So um, if the option, most services in Facebook, YouTube, TikTok will auto caption, turn it on and Instagram, just turn it on. Um, because even if it gets it, for me, it like gets my captions a little bit wrong. Um, you can go and edit the parts that are wrong or you can just let it be a little bit wrong and, uh, and call it good. Um, but yeah, just, you know, um, if you consider video, consider that people do watch it with the, with the sound off. And I was going to let us, um, experiment a little bit with video and I might actually cut this down a little bit to 15 minutes so that we can get through the rest of the presentation. But I just want you to feel like if you had to produce a 60 second video that like, you feel like you have the tools to do it. Now, if you want to go and just like hang out for 15 minutes, that's totally fine too. That's fine. But I want to give a couple of options if you want to use, and I'm going to just change this to 15 minutes instead of 20. Um, take a video with your phone and edit it with InShot. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be fancy. Literally, those videos of the KitchenAid guy is literally a KitchenAid guy talking and then showing stuff. I did a video on TikTok right before this about lead generation ads on Facebook. I spent three minutes filming it. I put like a title slide at the beginning or a, a little lead generation ad text on top of it. That's, that was the amount of editing I did. So it doesn't have to be fancy. People are not expecting it. They like authenticity. Um, they like feeling like they're in your business. They're vicariously like getting to, they've always wanted to do the kind of business that you're doing and they might be watching or they're thinking about hire, you know, and they're trying to get a feel for what you're like as a business. And if they, you know, and most of the time, if they get to know you, right? Like most people get to know you and they like you, right? So this is just a way of getting to know people on a larger scale. So option one, feel free to take a video on your on your phone or in shot, you know, just introduce yourself, your business, whatever. Hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm a health coach. Um, I got here because I, I had to lose a hundred pounds um, because my doctor said I had to. And so I read so much things, so many things on the internet. And now I like have gotten my certification and now I want to help other people, whatever, tell your story, whatever, just looking at the camera. I know it feels intimidating, but people really like that sort of thing. Um, and the other thing too, is if you're like, oh, I might try the streaming thing that Nicole does. Cause I also hate editing video cause I've done it before. Um, feel free to schedule a stream. You can, by the way, if you don't want to stream to multiple places, you do not need to use a service like, like the ones I mentioned. If you just want to go on Facebook and talk, just use the Facebook streaming thing. If you want to just go on Instagram and talk, just use the Instagram live. What the streaming services allow you to do is go to more than one place at a time. But if you're just starting off, maybe you just want to start in one place and sort of practice. So um, what you can do with any live stream is you can schedule a broadcast ahead of time. You can only do it a week ahead of time. You can't do it more than a week ahead of time. So what you can do is you can schedule a broadcast. Maybe you want to have a Q&A on maybe Friday. Maybe you say, hey, Q&A Friday with you know, with my business, with my, uh, with, with our resort in Mexico. I, I think someone, I saw that in the chat. Yeah. Q, Q and a, uh, Q and a Friday with our resort in Mexico. We're going to go live at 9am and we're going to just take your questions and we'll answer some frequently asked questions we get as well. So, um, and you can schedule that ahead of time and anybody who follows your Facebook page or Insta wherever you schedule it is going to see that you have a live coming up and they can say that they're interested, which means that they're going to get a notification when you go live. Um, so, yeah. So like whatever, whichever one of those speaks most to you, one of them maybe speaks more to you than the other. Um, go ahead and spend some time on that. Like I said, we'll, uh, we'll just do like 15 minutes this round. And, uh, does anybody have any, any questions, comments, ideas, hesitations? Okay. Just changing the time on the breakout rooms here. All right. So 15 minutes and we'll come back here and wrap up, but uh, just explore the idea of video. Even if you just want to watch a few videos of other people in your line of work and what they do, that's a fine use of time as well. Just, uh, yeah, think about video because if you're willing to do that, you're, the doors are going to be open to you as a, as a business owner. You're going to get a lot further with a lot less money. So, all right, I'm going to open the rooms now. We'll see you in 15 minutes.
Okay, thanks. Thanks to the person who said they can hear me. I hit the mute button apparently while I was moving my microphone on the break. It has a mute button on it, but it doesn't say mute on Zoom. So thanks. Um, does anybody um, have anything that they kind of worked through? Maybe something they thought of for a video idea or um, a tool that they kind of dipped into? I'm just kind of curious what people are thinking about related to video. All right. Maybe you're overwhelmed with the idea of video a little bit, and that's okay. Um, I'm Instagram is making well, Instagram. All the social media sites are pivoting to this. It's not like I'm trying to tell you anything that you probably haven't already noticed yourself. But you know, as a business owner, I guess what I don't want you to feel intimidated by is video as a format. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be um, a highly produced. And there's some tools there that will work really well. And something that I think Kelsey is probably going to share um, when she sends out the recording is I have a two-part series um, that I'm doing, one that I did last week and one that I'm doing tomorrow about short-form video formats that you can use as a small business. And I have 10 templates that you can work from and like why they work, how they work, and, and like how to do them. So, um, so don't feel intimidated by the process. Um, as I was trying to prepare my clients for this, I realized that there, I needed to have some content about it myself. So, um, so you can ch take a look at those if you're feeling still like, I still don't know what the heck this person's talking about. Um, I've got some actual examples for both broadcasts. Um, so they're under 60 seconds and they do something. And they're a format that any small business or nonprofit theoretically could use if there's any nonprofits on the call. So, um, so yeah, in short, like I said, I just kind of wanted to come back here and and say that like, you know, if you want to stay back, if you're having issues setting up um, Facebook business suite, um, or if you have any specific questions about your setup, if you want to hang back at the official end of the broadcast, what I'll do is I can make you a co-host and then I can see your screen and we can go through that. Um, but is there anything, Kelsey, that you want to say to wrap this up? Yes, thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you also to you, Nicole. Um, I feel like I didn't say this at the beginning, but if you're not familiar with the main SBDC, we are the Small Business Development Centers and we are here to help with any small business uh, assistance you may need. So if you are not already set up with a business advisor, um, a link to be able to sign up for some business advising will be in my follow-up email and we highly recommend that. Um, yeah, I'll make sure that all those links are included as well. Um, and if you have any questions at all along the way, feel free to e respond to any of my emails. Um, same will go for next week. It'll all be the same link as today. And we'll just circle back. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. And a quick testimony for me. I worked at the SBDC when I was first starting my business 14 years ago. And I have no business training. I'm a geology major. And here I am running a business. So um, they really uh, set people up and give really great advice. And if they don't know, they know people who know. So um, just personal testimony from me, the SPDC helped me out and I think they can pretty much help anybody. So, um, so yeah, if you have a specific question about your particular setup, um, just stick back. Otherwise I'll see everybody later. This is the official end. So bye.